So what are the three things you need to know when it comes to picking out your brewing accessories? So there's three things you want to keep in mind. First, you want to make sure that you are getting an accessory that allows the tea leaf to completely unfurl. So when you get a tea leaf, it's going to be tightly wound. Either it's going to be um, in this tight little ball like this milk oolong is, or you're going to get something that's maybe a tightly uh, wound leaf that's twisted. And what's going to happen when you put the hot water on it is it's going to expand and it's going to keep expanding until it's a completely large open leaf. When you use tools like the, um, the like the, the tea, they look like scoops, like the tea balls, or if you use like little teaspoons that open up and then they close down and they have little holes in them, well, that's not going to give those leaves enough space to unfurl over time because with loose leaf, you are steeping them over and over again. You're not just doing it one and done. So you want to make sure you have a steeping tool that lets that happen. With tea bags, you don't really have to worry about that because the little tea bags are little, that usually there's little particles inside. So you don't really have to worry about the, the tea leaves expanding. But with loose leaf, when you're getting the higher quality leaf, you're getting more oils and all of those good things coming out of those leaves, you need to make sure that you have something that allows it to expand. And I'm going to show you some examples of what I'm talking about in just a minute. Second, you want to make sure that you get something that allows you to control the steeping time. You want something that's really easy to take the tea out and maybe put the tea back in if you're going to re-steep your leaves. So, uh, sure, those little tea balls are great for that, but then there's certain things that maybe aren't so great. And I'm going to, um, for instance, leaving your tea leaves in, like I, I think I've talked to you about this before, like if you just leave your tea bag in your cup while you're sipping it, well, that's not going to be really helpful because it's going to continue to brew and it's going to get muddy and bitter. And that's, that's not very flavor. It's not, doesn't taste good. You're not going to get the same complex flavors. It's going to be so overpowered by the bitterness in the tea. You're not going to want to drink it. So sometimes, uh, if you leave them in a teapot, so here's an example of what I'm talking about here. If you put the leaves inside of the basket and then you put them inside of the teapot and you just let it sit, well, what's going to happen is that the tea leaves are going to continue cooking and you are going to get a more bitter cup. But if you take this basket out while you're sipping your tea, then you're going to have better tea and you can keep that warm on a tea warmer and I'll show you one of those in just a minute. So the ones that I particularly like, there's a, a brew and mug that I really like because it's super simple to dunk in and out of your water. You can use it multiple times. It's easy to clean. And I'll link to that in the post as well. Um, you could also use a French press. If you already have a French press in your house, this is actually a really great thing to use because you can push the tea down at the bottom of the French press. And I'll show you an example of one in a second. And when you do that, the leaves are going to be at the bottom. You'll be able to enjoy the water at the top. Now, it's not a perfect tool, I think, because there is a sieve and the water still seeping into those leaves and the leaves are continuing to um, have their oils extracted by the hot water that's inside that French press. So I don't know that that's really an ideal way to keep your leaves, but if you're planning on pouring all of the water out, all of the uh, tea out of the French press, then you're good to go because those oils aren't being uh, seeped out of the leaf until your next brew. Okay, so let me show you a few different things like that I've been talking about. So you see all the way on your, I think it would be your left, you're gonna see the French press that I was talking about. And in that French press here, you, see that there's a, a push pump and it's going to push the lever, the, the sieve all the way down and pushing the tea leaves all the way down to the bottom and leaving all of the tea at the top and that's what you would be pouring out. And then in the middle is the Bruin mug that I was talking about. It's inside of a clear glass and that Bruin mug can be removed from the glass 
and placed on the coaster beside the cup. So it's really easy to control the steeping. You can re-steep it. You just throw it right back into the mug to be steeped. So this is my favorite tool because it allows you to completely control the uh, the length of time you're steeping your leaves. It also allows you to um, to let the leaves completely unfurl because there's enough space inside of the infuser. And then the third thing that I wanted to let you know about is something that's easy to clean is always ideal. That's the third thing that you're going to want to look for when you're choosing your brew accessory. So the one on the left, the, the French press, it's fine. It's pretty easy to clean. The Bruin mug for me personally is very simple because I can simply dump the contents into uh, a bag, a trash bag or a composter, and then I can let it air dry. And then the next morning, if there's any dry flakes of tea in there, I can dump those out. It, it stays clean pretty well. Uh, and then on the far right is a cast iron teapot. And so these are the ones that you've probably seen at like um, at World Market and inside you've got a tea basket. These are not supposed to be used on the stove. These particular cast iron teapots are meant only to steep tea. They are not meant to heat water. So um, the reason for that is because there's an enamel inside and if you heat these cast iron teapots on the stove, the enamel inside of the teapot is going to crack and you don't want that. <laughs> so you're going to want to just steep your leaves inside of this cast iron teapot and then once you've steeped your tea and you've taken the basket out of the cast iron teapot, you're then going to want to get a tea warmer and in, under the tea warmer, underneath the cast iron teapot, you're going to place a little tea candle, which is what those are for, and then you put that in there and you heat the water up and it's as simple as that. And those are really the three easiest ways to brew loose leaf tea. You've also got ceramic teapots, which I love, and you can also get ceramic tea warmers, which are also great for keeping the tea warm. The important part is to make sure that those loose leaf teas come out of the water while you're keeping the water hot because you do not want the leaves to continue to cook. You don't want all of those oils to be extracted into the water because that is in part what creates that bitter brew, which we're trying to avoid. All right, so if you have any questions about loose leaf tea or how any of these brewing techniques work, brewing accessories work, then comment in the in the post and I will get back to you on that. But I will post links to the the two the three different things that we have going here that I've shown you: the Bruin mug, the uh, cast iron teapot, as well as the French press. So there you have it. I hope you have a wonderful evening and keep your eyes open for the 14 day tea tour coming up in October. There will be a link that will be inside this post and you should go to it and let me know your info and you will be the first to get an invite to the free tea workshop coming up. All right. Thank you so much and you have a wonderful night.